Is it possible to have inflation without a meaningful jump in interest rates? Well, isn't that what the Fed's trying to generate here? Um, so far, yes. they've yes, been it successful. Is. But it's very early days, right? They've been successful so far. We've, we're back to the don't fight the Fed, but it is early days. You know, in the previous segment, you had talked about dollar weakening. Guess what's great for an inflation outlook for a Fed policymaker? Dollar weakening because it puts upward pressure uh, on prices and particularly import prices. You know, you know that we've been in the camp arguing since the middle of last year that we would be in a higher inflationary environment. Um, but here's why uh, uh, the, the, the long-term downtrend uh, in rates uh, is really just a low rate trend, not a further downtrend in rates. But when you're carrying debt levels that are this enormous, uh, what it does is it makes every rate increase you do that much more powerful. So you don't need to raise rates as much to get a big impact on the economy. And so that does end up uh, lowering the neutral rate uh, of where you can get to uh, in a cycle. So I think we are in a yeah. low interest rate environment. I'm not sure that it continues to trend downward. You, you know, I don't know if it was Rocky 1 or Rocky 2, Ellen, but there's a scene where they're trying to make Rocky faster and he's running around trying to catch a chicken. You know, to sort of work on his foot speed. Now, I wonder, it felt like that's the Fed with inflation. Inflation, of course, is the chicken, not Rocky. Has the Fed no. lost control or do they still maintain? Are they fast enough? So we all like to think that, that they're fast enough, right? But there have been times historically when they've not been fast enough and allowed inflation to go too far. Uh, and, and, uh, and like you said, it can't. They're chasing the chicken and can't get. It. I feel like you've just described my my childhood, uh, and so um, huh. you know. Right now, we're still in early days, so they're trying to generate higher inflation. They are willing to accept higher inflation, and they say, "Hey, if it starts to look like it's getting out of control, we know exactly what to do." But this was something that we argued in a, in our thesis a hotter but shorter cycle. Uh, it's one reason why with inflationary pressures, if they start to push the envelope of that ceiling, sort of implicit ceiling of around two and a half percent on core inflation, uh, that the Fed would have to act. Um, it could be very disruptive for markets. The Fed might ha have to act quicker than it would have liked yeah. to in this cycle, and therefore you precipitate a downturn. So I would think of this as we're, we're going to run a very hot cycle, and therefore it could be shorter. We shouldn't be sitting here thinking we're going to be in another 10-year expansion. It's just, it feels like, Ellen, without getting political too much, there's a huge disconnect. When I listen to a lot of our politicians speak, the president or others, I know they're in D.C., the most locked down big city in the United States, and what you see every day sort of defines what you think, right? If you're Chuck Schumer, you come back to New York and you go, oh, New York City's still locked down. What you realize is the rest of the country has done well. In fact, most economic sectors have done better. I understand there's millions of people that are suffering from hospitality, small business, travel, and leisure. But outside of that, much of the American economy boomed over the last years. Everybody worked and had excess savings. What I'm saying is stimulus certainly needed in certain parts. I've argued for bigger programs for the hospitality sector. That said, do you think the government has misinterpreted how strong the U.S. economy remained even during the pandemic? Did they overshoot, I guess, is the short way to ask the question. So I think what we have to remember is that we can't, we don't have a counterfactual of what the economy would look like without all the government support. But I can tell you that it's an economy we would not have wanted to live in. Uh, and so you can't say have we have we it's very difficult to say have we done enough have we done too much you know we've performed very well because we didn't have a drop in income at a time when we had a hit to the yep. economy and so we're having this very rapid recovery now um we can argue uh yep. have they done too much i could argue that we we did too much in this last package uh we did more to plug the hole but but it's it's a difficult argument yeah Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.